everybody, today we're going to talk about finding the maximum or minimum of a quadratic function. And maybe you're thinking we've done this already, but take a look at the function this time. I have f of x is equal to x squared plus 8x. The problem is this is not written in standard form, so it's not obvious what the vertex is going to be. I do know when I find the vertex, it will be a minimum because the coefficient of x squared is a positive 1. So we're going to do this twice. We're going to do it a long way to establish what we're doing, and then I'm going to teach you a shortcut. The long way of answering this question involves completing the square. If you remember, when we complete the square, we look at the coefficient of the x term, we divide it by 2, and we square it. In the past, we had equations. So when we added something on the left, we added something on the right. Now that we have a function, we can't really add things to the left and right. So what we do to balance out completing the square is when I add 8 over 2 squared, I also subtract 8 over 2 squared. This ensures that I haven't really changed the overall value of the function, I just changed the looks. From here, x squared plus 8x plus 8 over 2 squared becomes x plus 4 squared. Because 8 over 2 is 4 and 4 squared is 16, I have a minus 16 at the end. Now that I've completed the square, I can see that the vertex is at negative 4, negative 16, and remember we said this is a minimum. Our easier method is to look at f of x is ax squared plus bx plus c and use the formula negative b over 2a, f of negative b over 2a gives us the coordinates of the vertex. Let's go back to our previous problem and calculate negative b over 2a. My b term is 8, so I have negative 8 over 2 times 1, where 1 is the coefficient of x squared. Negative 8 over 2 gives me a value of negative 4. The negative 4 is my h value, or the x coordinate, of my vertex. To find the y coordinate, I need to plug the negative 4 back into my original function. This gives me negative 4 squared plus 8 times negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. 8 times negative 4 is negative 32. 16 minus 32 gives me negative 16, and I once again got the same vertex of negative 4, negative 16, and I didn't have to complete the square. And maybe completing the square doesn't sound too bad when we first look at it, but the problems are going to get more complicated as we put in other coefficients for x squared. So let's look at f of x is 2x squared minus 12x plus 4 and we're going to find the vertex using our shortcut of negative b over 2a, f of negative b over 2a. To start, I have negative negative 12 over 2 times 2. Our b term was negative, and I don't want to lose the two negative signs, so I put the negative 12 in parentheses so you can see the double negative. Negative negative 12 is 12, 2 times 2 is 4, 12 over 4 gives me 3, so I have the h term of my vertex. To get the k, I'm going to plug the 3 back into the function. f of 3 gives me 2 times 3 squared minus 12 times 3 plus 4. This simplifies down to negative 14. My vertex is 3, negative 14, and once again, this is a minimum because the leading coefficient is a positive value. Let's try an application. The revenue for selling a clothes dryer can be modeled by the function r of p is negative 4p squared plus 4,000p. What price maximizes the revenue? The first thing I notice is the negative 4 as my leading coefficient. This tells me my quadratic opens upside down, which verifies I'll have a maximum value at the vertex. I only need the first coordinate of the vertex because I'm only looking at the price. I'm not asked about the actual revenue. Find my value. I'm going to use negative b over 2a. This is negative 4,000 over 2 times negative 4. This reduces to negative 4,000 over negative 8, which says $500 should be the price of the dryer. Our next problem says a ball is thrown upward and outward from a height of 4.5 feet. The height of the ball, f of x in feet, can be modeled by f of x is negative 0.1x squared plus 1.4x plus 4.5, where x is the ball's horizontal distance in feet from where it was thrown. What is the maximum height the ball is thrown? So let's start by really understanding what we're trying to figure out and what we know. x tells me the horizontal distance, and I'm trying to find the height, which is the vertical distance. 
This is I need to find both the h and the k for this function. Just like the last couple of problems, I start with negative b over 2a. This time, I have negative 1.4 over 2 times negative 0.1. This is negative 1.4 over negative 0.2, which gives me 7. 7 is the horizontal distance of the ball. To find the vertical distance, I calculate f of 7. Negative 0.1 times 7 squared plus 1.4 times 7 plus 4.5 gives me 9.4 feet. We're going to look at when will the ball hit the ground, and then we're going to graph the ball from the time it is thrown until it hits the ground. We are not going to do this by hand. We're going to go over to Desmos and look at the graph there. I'll start by typing in the function f of x is equal to negative 0.1 x squared plus 1.4 x plus 4.5. I want to make a restriction that x is going to be greater than 0. I'm going to write it as 0 is less than x because I'm going to add a second piece to this function. I'm going to zoom in a little. When I click on the function, notice it tells me the highest point is at 7, 9.4, which is what we just found. Now if I go over on the x-axis, I can see an x-intercept at 16.695. I want that to be the other side of my restriction. So back to the x, I'm going to put less than 16.695. The 16.695 tells me when the ball hits the ground. The graph overall shows me the path of the ball from the time it was hit until the time it reaches the ground. Let's do one last application. You have 600 feet of fencing. What's the largest rectangular area that can be fenced in? I'm going to start by drawing us a picture. So I have a rectangle, and I know I have a length and a width. I'm just going to call them x and y. I know that 2 times x plus 2 times y is going to equal 600, because that's the perimeter of the rectangle. I don't really want to have two variables. I only want to have one. I'm going to solve this equation for y. That says 2y is 600 minus 2x. Then y is 300 minus x, and I'll put that back over on my rectangle. I'm looking for area. I know the area is x times y, so I can write a is x times 300 minus x. I'll distribute the x to get a is 300x minus x squared. Now that it looks like a quadratic, I can apply my negative b over 2a, which is negative 300 over 2 times negative 1. This gives me negative 300 over negative 2, which is a positive 150. Notice the 300 was the b because it goes with the x term. If that gets confusing, rewrite the terms in descending order so that you can see a, b, and c correctly. Now that I know the value of x, to find the value of y, I just plug it back in to 300 minus x. 300 minus 150 gives me 150 again. My overall area is 150 times 150 which is 22,500 square feet. Sometimes people will tell me that that can't be the answer because I got 150 and 150, which is a square, and the problem asks for a rectangle. Remember, all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. So if you get equal values in your answer, it's perfectly okay.